Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hope you guys are doing awesome out there. I hope you're doing super awesome. So we're going to take a look at some of the Earth changes going on. And here we've been talking about China with, you know, 400,000 people being affected by floods in just the Jiangxi province. Check this out. I mean, this is an adorable house. And it's going in for the swim there. It looks like a dollhouse. Yeah, it, it's still going on in China. The, you know, it's the flooding is just in, insane and incredible. And also in India uh, as well. And and really, I mean, if we're we're just talking about that part of the globe, we got to talk about all over the globe. <laughs> you know, it's just all over the globe. Oh, you know, so I don't forget about it. I want to show these. This was wild. This is down. In, in South Africa, Cape Town, Cape Town. Watch these winds. <laughs> that was insane, was it not? I mean, those winds are powerful. It just blew that over like it was a tinker toy. That's crazy scary. It is. It is. And I want to thank one of our viewers that sent that in. Amazing what we're seeing out there, the power of nature. So we have Tropical Storm Fay officially forms off the North Carolina coast. Now, it's, it should not turn into a hurricane, but, you know, these are crazy times. Uh, so you can't say, you know, no to anything in these times. But it does have the potential to bring a lot of rain up the coast into New York and into Connecticut, Rhode Island, and up into Mass and New England. So we'll keep an eye on that. It should not be a very powerful storm, but it hasn't taken powerful storms to bring tons of rain and flooding and chaos. No, it just seems like it's just happening. And if, if it, well, it did happen. So it is a named storm. So that's another record that's being broken. So It'll be number six, I believe. And, you know, that's another, yeah, that's another record because we had Tropical Storm Edward. That was number five, and this is number six. So, you know, records breaking everywhere. Over in Thailand, we see them paralyzed by major flash flood after a heavy thunderstorm as well. Typical scenes that we're seeing, you know, from China, from Japan, Thailand, just all over the massive flooding that is going on and look at this look at that sinkhole this is in st louis missouri this truck just crashed into this massive sinkhole which was caused by a water main leak but then again what caused the water main leak you know st louis is not far from the new madrid as well um, so there's a lot of changes in the earth there's a lot of changes in the earth's crust and you know, these are times of massive change. So we have severe thunderstorms that slammed um, a whole bunch of people in the Midwest. Powerful storms, more to come. And be very careful out there. There's been so many lightning strikes. Look at that photo. Is that not incredible? The power, the plasma, the life force. Oh, I love that color purple. It's absolutely gorgeous. But again, going through the central part of the, the country, uh, be on the lookout for severe storms heading your way. And we had a flash flood that took DoorDash driver on a wild, wild, wild ride through the New Jersey drainage system. So this driver ended up getting caught in the rains. Natalia Bruno is her name, she's 24, making a delivery during a heavy rainstorm her, ca her car got caught in deep waters on Monday in the Passaic, in Passaic, and it, it was just swept uh, uh, with the waters. We've talked about that for years now, talking about, you know, don't take chances. Don't think because you were able to cross a road that was a little bit flooded maybe a year ago, you could do it again today. Everything is changing. So she was able to escape the vehicle as it began to fill with water, but the currents pulled her and the car into a brook that runs underneath the city. 
So rushing waters pushed her for about a mile before she was shot out into the Passaic River. That almost sounds cartoonish. It's, yeah, it's wild. And that reminds me of um, when I was a little kid. Uh, well, not too little, maybe 10 years old. We used to go play in the river. Now, one of our favorite rivers uh, led to a tunnel. So, you know, went exploring and it went under, you know, the town where I was living. And we were down there, me and my a couple of my buddies, just roving through the sewers with the rats and everything else well underneath the town. And then we ended up coming up, you know, quite a ways away uh, over by a park that we used to go to on the other side of town. Um, it was actually kind of a crazy, stupid thing to do. But, you know, hey, I was like a 10 year old kid. So uh, this is from Amy McGrath. As I travel Kentucky, local officials and residents tell me they need infrastructure to deal with flooding. And so when you look at this, new data reveals hidden flood risk across America. Nearly twice as many properties may be susceptible to flood damage than previously thought. Well, that's because things are changing. Yeah, definitely. Pretty simple. The atmosphere is changing. The weather is changing. The severe floods are becoming a real common occurrence. And we have a winter pressure system that hits Cyprus in July. And so here here we are talking about the Mediterranean area, and they're having a winter pressure system. Uh, highly unusual. N- not common in July when temperatures are typically reaching their, their high. So we have these wild swings. And as you see, it's not normal to be affected by a winter pressure system during the summer, bringing temperatures down from, I'll use the Fahrenheit, anywhere close to 106 to 95 in a matter of days, only for them to go back up to 106 on the weekend when the system retreats. It, we're seeing just unusual things everywhere. Here you see sub-zero cold, record-breaking 4 meters or 13 feet of snow hit South America. And, of course, it's winter down there. But, again, uh, records are just falling left and right as we see buried houses under snow. And this is up in Montana, Glacier National Park. They're still digging out snow. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, th- this is the craziness that we have. And we were... Obviously, watching you know all the quake activity, especially on the west coast. So months after that 6.5 quake struck Idaho, the southern part of the state is still shaking, and scientists, the mainstream scientists, still don't know why. You know, they should just talk to Dutch, as so many of us do or watch, uh, and, and really understand how things are going. Um, although I think what's coming might even be surprising uh, for Dutch, because I know. Like, he doesn't believe that, you know, California is going to float off into the sea. And, you know, even if we do end up with California being a series of islands and much of the West, you know, underwater, it's not really what he sees. He's, you know, he's in that middle ground. He's, he, he's you know, most definitely not along with the mainstream science, scientists. Um, but at the same time, I don't think he's given credence to, say, what, uh, you know, Edgar Casey saw at the same time. But there's changes afoot, most definitely. And, you know, we've had a lot of shaking. And let's let's just take a peek at the USGS and see what else has um, arisen since I looked a little while ago. And that's just basically a 5.1 down there in Columbia. And we got some decent quake activity going on right on the border between Georgia and Tennessee and then North Carolina over here as well. This is Spruce Pine at 2.0, and then we have 2.4 over here, McKaysville, and 2.3 Indian Springs area. But, you know, those are there are ancient falls that go there through there as well as that being part of the Craton. And as we were talking about, we, we, you know, we still have quake activity going on. So if we're looking at Idaho, basically, I got one over here in Wyoming. We've got 17 quakes, and this is the area where that 6.5 occurred. And then before we had that big quake just west of Tonopah, and and you know there's still a lot of swarming going on. So right here we're looking at 135 quakes, 
And I notice every now and then it kind of is starting to swarm a little bit farther south. So this is actually south of Goldfield. And you got 23 quakes right there. Now this part of the crust is stretching. It is stretching as we've talked about. And if we look at faults, uh, what do we see? We see tons of faults, tons of faults all through Nevada and going down, of course, California as well. We can see we have the San Andreas. See, we have the Garlock going across. So tons and tons of faults. And we can see how the faults run up into Utah. And they head right over towards you know, our Yellowstone area. And as we see the Idaho area, there's some faults here. And there are earthquakes right over there as well. So lots of changes going on, most definitely. We've had tremendous flooding and we have tremendous droughts. We have a tremendous drought out in the western U.S. developing. Satellites are showing signs of drought in European groundwater. Uh, the red is severe. So this is building. It takes longer to uh, replenish the groundwater because you're going to need consistent rains to get it to replenish. So ominous signs. The other thing, too, is like the Ukraine is a breadbasket. This is an area that produces a lot of food. And again, that whole side of it is just building. And so MagLab geochemists solve the mystery of Earth's disappearing crust. Well, it just basically gets recycled. And, um, you know, they're just talking about how things have stayed pretty steady, about how the whole process goes. You know, when we have a subduction zone, uh, you know, it goes, the crust goes down in, gets melted, recycled. And there you, there you have it. And they could tell by the composition of the crust itself. And perhaps in, in some places uh, it, it gets put into the plumes that we see, such as Yellowstone is a plume. The Hawaiian Islands uh, are a plume as well. And we talked about that and just the fact of how it curves. Like when you look at this, this is a plume. The plume stays in one spot and the crust moves. So we could see, you know, right now the plume is sitting right here. And it's moving. There's a reason, you know, why we have a, a, a progression. Like when we, you know, look at Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, you know, they were more active. Well, Mauna Kea was active before Mauna Loa. Then Mauna Loa got to be the main one. Mauna Loa still is technically inactive. Um, and then you have Kilauea. And then we probably will end up with the plume moving off of the main island. Uh, you know, maybe uh, it'll just make the main island bigger or perhaps it'll make more islands. But the thing that I'm really, that I really look at and find as, you know, evidence of crustal displacement is this. Because this shows how it moved. So it was kind of going straight and, and then all of a sudden we have a huge turn. And, you know, to me, that looks like that's bigger than 90 degrees, probably 110, 115 degrees. So at some point, if the plume is staying in one spot, the crust shifted greatly. And um, that's a wow. You know, I mean, can you imagine just what would happen with something like that? Pretty wild stuff and interesting. Astronomers spot four mysterious unidentified circular objects in outer space. So, you know, they don't know what they are. Of course, they're not saying they're UFOs and they're circular. They're saying, well, it's probably just some sort of phenomenon that we don't know. Maybe some sort of ancient blast of this or that. Yeah, or maybe it's just simply, you know. Swamp gas from Venus? Well, yeah, I was thinking of a different planet, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty wild stuff. So it says they are high up in the sky relative to the galactic plane of the Milky Way. So, yeah, if we're looking at our galaxy, um, you could almost think of a sunny side up egg, sort of. You know, it, it's kind of got that bulge in the middle. And so these are up a little bit high relative to the galactic plane. 
where there's typically less stars. Um, they are rough, roughly one arc minute in diameter. For reference, as observed from Earth, the Sun and the Moon both have angular diameters of about 30 arc minutes. However, given that we don't know how far away they are, we can't put any sort of reference into perspective. So it doesn't really help us. So they don't know. You know winnowing down the possibilities even further is the fact that the signatures of the orcs do not match those of planetary nebula, which we have studied, nor do they fit the profile of supernova remnants either, leading to prolific head-scratching among astrophysicists and astronomy communities. Why can't they just say that they have something to do with perhaps extraterrestrial civilizations? Because that would be too close to disclosure. Perhaps. Now, people saw what they thought was a UFO over Martinsville. See this? But in reality, this really did turn out to be a weather balloon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, some of them are weather balloons, and a lot of them aren't either. Sometimes there is a rational explanation. Yes. So what's the ras rational explanation for no more physical fitness assessments for 2020? So says the Navy, well, they say it's because of safety. And with the plague upon the land, uh, somehow it's endangering people to take a physical fitness assessment. Why don't you just spread people out so that they're 18 feet away instead of six feet? And I got to wonder, you know, are they trying to cover something up or are they, I mean, what are they doing? It makes absolutely no sense at all. There's a lot that doesn't make sense yeah. lately. I mean, just a lot. <clears throat> so how to become a gray man. Mm. And I don't I don't mean the color of my beard or anything like that. Um, fading into the masses, fading into the pack, uh, not sticking out. Think about what we've seen. I mean, we've seen people pulled out of cars, beaten, um, we've seen all sorts of mobs and it's kind of hit me too how, you know, you, you see the chaos with the mobs out there. Some people don't get bothered and other ones do. So, you know, how do you get to be gray where people don't notice you? So there's a video here that goes into that. Um, and as it says, one of the best survival skills you could have is the ability to blend in with a crowd. So you can avoid attracting attention. That might save somebody's life in these days. And that's why I put this in here because, you know, with all the chaos going on, you don't know. I mean, we were talking to, well, we had um, clients from different, where people were helping from different areas and, you know, one in a city. And, you know, you start thinking about, you know, how safe are you? And, and, you know, nothing was happening since the original riots there, thankfully. But you just don't know when things could break out all over. So how do you not get singled out? It's a skill. It really is a skill, the ability to blend in. It, it, it doesn't just depend on your looks or clothing, but that is important. As we were talking about in a video a few days ago, I was watching a guy that you know, served a lot of time in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he is a backwoodsman, hunter, survivalist. But he doesn't wear camo because he doesn't want to stick out. He doesn't want people thinking, oh, okay, you know, uh, this this guy's this or this guy's that. Because our clothes could label us, you know, our hairstyle, everything. Everything could kind of label us, especially in these times when people are being just pushed into these different groups whether they want it or not it's it's just um something that is going on out there where unfortunately it, it's part of the division that's going on so you know again we go to the grocery store we don't know when craziness is going to break out there's been all sorts of stuff that happens so maybe check out this video and get some tips on how to blend in could be very important yeah, extremely important could save your life it really could guys so thank you for your support on patreon and we do have some some new patreons that came aboard so uh thank you so much robert mm -hmm. uh for your support mm -hmm. and it's a pleasure helping you as well mary. and thank you mary tiffany. um and okay so we have robert mary tiffany and peter thank you Thank you guys so much for your support. We couldn't do it without you and also on Ko-Fi uh, <coughs> where you could support one time 
or also on a monthly like Patreon. And then also join us over at Discord, which has been a wonderful thing that seems to uh, really have solidified the family. It's constantly active. There's always people there no matter what time of day or night. So we want to encourage you uh, to go check that out as well. And I'll put a link there for that. So guys, as always, be safe, be prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.